So it's, it's very easy to, to keep the developer inside the box and not make you spaghetti code referencing a lot of other uh, plugins. Another uh, success factor is to, to keep uh, services and user interface components in different plugins. So put your log it, log, uh, logic in, in the service layer. Uh, then uh, uh, it's easy to, uh, to uh, have different user interfaces for the same services. So you might, might have uh, some um, with a bootstrap uh, CRUD interface for, uh, for, um, for the admin people. And you can have some other uh, interface for other people. And you can uh, um, expose the service uh, layer to the web trunk because you want to display some information on the, on the public web. But then you don't expose the, uh, the user interface uh, uh, to the front end. So you only have the service in the front end application. Then you have the back, uh, back office application and where you have uh, an only admin user interface. So keep services uh, and domain classes in one plane and all the user interface stuff uh, in another plane. And, um, and you can also use the service plugin to write uh, microservice style applications or, or uh, put a REST uh, controller in front of uh, the uh, service layer to have a produce JSON or talk to an Angular application. So, so um, that's uh, um, a very important thing to, to keep um, the service layer uh, free from any user interface components. And you should also um, make sure uh, that you don't have um, a lot of plugin, intra plugin dependencies. So if you're making a, a big application with lots of plugins, you should uh, uh, make the plugins uh, as few dependencies on other plugins as possible. But it, it's quite easy when you, when you develop uh, a plugin with, uh, with this uh, in mind that you that service is uh, separated and each plugin is the only one you can test for. So, um, and if you have the need to, to have some common services, put those uh, common services in a separate plugin. And you can uh, let, uh, it's okay for other plugins to, to access common services. <coughs> but uh, keep the common services um, plugins uh, to a minimum. <coughs> but how do you communicate with uh, with plugin between plugins if uh, if you don't are allowed to, to have dependencies on them? Well, um, uh, the option we use is to, to use uh, messaging. Uh, and that's uh, it's the same thing here. Um, to send uh, messages between uh, between plugins. And I'll come explain more in detail later. And Spring itself has uh, built-in um, event uh, support. So you can set an application event and you can have uh, an event listener to listen for, for events. And if you want more advanced uh, event supporting, you can use uh, uh, Spring integration product framework with um, a lot of uh, routing uh, rules and, and very advanced stuff. And Fresh Camel is also um, a product that you can use to uh, to, to uh, uh, route messages between uh, system components. And the uh, Platform Core uh, is a plugin that's uh, not actively developed, but uh, it's uh, still maintained and it works in the latest uh, version. Uh, not, I uh, haven't tested it in Grace uh, 3 yet, but uh, up to Grace uh, 2.5. Um, so Platform Core uh, includes uh, event support where you can broadcast event events from one uh, controller <coughs> method or service method, and then um, you can listen to events in other uh, plugins. 
Uh, and the greatest of three includes uh, event support out of the box. So uh, that's uh, great, I think. Uh, but we have one common way to do uh, event between uh, uh, plugins and applications. So but you should also limit uh, uh, the number of uh, um, messages or ways to send uh, messages between plugins. It's better for a plugin to, if a plugin wants to send an email, for example, uh, then uh, uh, it should not send that uh, message to the email plugin. It should just uh, compose uh, a message with from, and to, and subject, and a message plugin, and then just send an event, send the email. And hopefully someone will listen for that event, and usually that is uh, the application. The application is the router that listens for, for all events that are about uh, sending an email, and the application knows what plugins are installed in the application. And the application knows to send this to the email plugin, for example. But you can switch that to, to send the uh, email message to something completely different services. Service. So let the application be the director that listens to events and coordinate them to different plugins. Then it's much easier to uh, to change how uh, we communicate with, uh, with, with each other. Because the application has all the plugins in the build config file, uh, so the application knows about most of the plugins directly. So they, you, can, uh, you can run some messages. But what are the drawbacks with, uh, uh, with uh, working with events and sending messages? Well, um, error handling can be uh, a little harder to, to track down when, uh, when you get an exception somewhere. Uh, you get a, an exception somewhere in the email plugin. It's harder to find the path back to who really sent that uh, email. Because maybe it was the problem in the source that they didn't supply uh, um, what the email address to, to, to send to. But that's really the problem was that the plugin that sent uh, this event. So stack traces can be can be hard to follow. And uh, debugging because you cannot uh, do a single step so easy uh, because you just send a message. And but um, those are problems that uh, small problems and then you compare to what you what you win when you when you use the messaging. But what about the domain model? model? Uh, how can you fetch data from uh, from other uh, plugins uh, when uh, when you're not allowed to have compile time dependencies to, to other plugins? Well, you can use uh, the detached uh, criteria uh, that is included in uh, in Rails. And detached criteria is, uh, is a normal criteria um, API, but you don't need a connection to the database or, or have any session when you create uh, the criteria. So you create a criteria instance, and then you add um, <coughs> query filters, like uh, last name equals something. And uh, then you can uh, send that uh, criteria instance to another service. And when the service needs to, to retrieve the results of that query, uh, the service executes uh, the criteria. And now you need to have an insertion connection to the database. But uh, for that, uh, you don't need the, the, the session. But that's a way to uh, if you have a plugin that uh, exports to Excel, a plugin very specific to export data to Excel, uh, then you can uh, create a criteria what is to be exported uh, in, in one plugin and just send it uh, with an event to, uh, uh, to the Excel exporter. And the exporter will execute query and uh, 
it's already there the way it wants. And so that's an option. But um, criteria instances are not serializable, so you cannot uh, send it over, a, store it in a database, or, or send it over a message queue. But uh, if you need that, you can use the selection plugin. And the selection plugin is um, it's a plugin that express, express uh, and queries as uh, URLs. So um, query looks uh, like this. Uh, new URI, uh, and then a specific syntax for, for different kinds of things. In this example, uh, there is a person service that uh, varies for, for people in the database. It returns a result set of uh, person instances. So that's in, in one service. Then when you want to um, create a, a criteria or a query, you create a URI uh, instance. Think of um, person service list and then uh, the, the filter name equals uh, A. And URI instances are serializable, so you can store this in a database. If you want to give uh, people the option to, to save uh, save their filters for later use, you can, you can send, save them in the database. And then you use the selection service that is a part of the selection plugin to actually do the query. So to uh, uh, supply the, the URI instance to, uh, to the selection service, and that will eventually call this person service to do the list every time the result. So here you use the query, here you create the query, here you use it, and this it can be called. And there are other um, um, options in the in the criteria now in the selection uh, plugin to um, to talk directly to Gorm. So you can have a, a Gorm query person uh, slash list first name last name that would be uh, one query um, for the person to name uh, class. You can call any any service uh, that you have uh, annotated with uh, selectable. Uh, if you don't have um, that uh, um, annotation, uh, it would make a huge uh, security hole where you can specify uh, you are able to access any um, service. So therefore, it's, uh, uh, we need to have uh, the selectable uh, annotation on each method that, or, that you're allowed to call from the selection plan. And also for the one uh, queries, you can restrict that to, to only specific domain uh, process. If you want to um, um, refer from, from refer from, from one domain class to another, um, and you can't have associations in uh, um, in the domain layer, how should you um, store references to other domain instances? We use this uh, technique where we store. Uh, the reference as uh, a string, and uh, the first part is, is the domain uh, class, and uh, the second part is the primary key. So if um, if we um, want to refer to a specific uh, person, as in this example, this, this is a uh, some document that we want to store connected to uh, a person. We don't want to have an association from a document domain to a person domain because that would be too, too limited. And because if you want to attach uh, the document to a project, then we must have an association to the project. So there's a lot of associations that we don't want. So instead we use the soft association in the document domain. So the document refers to a person at 42. 
then it's very easy to, to look up that uh, person when you need it. If you put out the document from the database and you want to look up what what uh, uh, domain is this um, referring to, just uh, look up the person um, the domain and go get on the panel. Then you have the, the person. And if it was a project, then it's of course the project. You can find all the documents connected to uh, this person with the uh, uh, find all and find it. So, um, as I said, we, uh, we have been using uh, this uh, strategy for building uh, custom uh, applications for our customers uh, for several years and it worked, worked uh, very well. And the result uh, is uh, a suite of plugins that uh, uh, are, there's around 40 plugins on, on GitHub. Uh, 20 of them are available on Rails uh, Central under the name uh, Great CRM. So here you can see, if you, if you look at the GitHub uh, account, you can, you can see how every plugin do one specific thing. The contact plugin is for this address book uh, for people, uh, companies, organizations, and relations between them. Content is for documents, files, whatever that you can attach to contacts. The tasks is uh, things that should be scheduled uh, at a date and time, and so on. And. Uh, I'm going to give a, a short demo of, uh, of this uh, uh, an application uh, developed uh, this way. So here uh, I have uh, an empty. Um, we start with an empty uh, Rails um, application. We, uh, we boot up uh, Rails. And here is the build config file. Can, can anyone uh, uh, Build config file of, um, of an empty Rails application. It's not too exciting. Uh, it's just a hibernate and database migration uh, plugin. And uh, if we uh, we see the traditional empty uh, Rails uh, application. Not too exciting. But if we uh, look at uh, if we install the uh, the contact uh, plugin. We install the contact plugin in an empty Rails, uh, or you don't see anything. And then if we 
way low this uh, application. We get a the Twitter bootstrap user interface because uh, the dash dy plugin depended on the Twitter bootstrap plugin, so it was pulled in. So we get a, a nice user interface uh, uh, based on uh, Twitter bootstrap. And uh, let me switch to English. I think I'm Chrome. We have the contact uh, plugin uh, where I can uh, search for, for contacts. And uh, we have uh, a little contact uh, database where you can see uh, people and uh, relations between uh, people. And the only thing we did was to, to install the, uh, uh, the contact plugin and the empty uh, Waves application. And to give you another example, if we, uh, if we install the, uh, the content um, plugin, uh, the content plugin that uh, allow us to to upload documents and attach documents to, to different uh, um, domain classes. Then, um, uh, let's see. Start out that application. If you look at um, the config file now, uh, you see that the only thing added is at the end is the CRM content UI uh, plugin, and uh, so we have both the contact plugin and uh, the UI and the plugin. And the UI plugin has no knowledge about contacts. Its only focus is to uh, manage uh, uploading of documents and. Uh, and the view documents and list documents and, and the content management for you. But there is also the user interface plugin has a, an option to possibility to add user interface components in the application. So you have a, a web application with a GSP page for example, to view uh, the contact. Then, then you can, when you install the content management plugin, that plugin can inject um, a page or a tab in the contact plugin. But as I said, the, the, the content management plugin does not know about contacts. So it's, it's the applications the application is the responsible for injecting that uh, page information into the content plugin. So this is the, the bootstrap um, class in the application where it registers uh, a view that um, the, the GSP page is, uh, is in the um, content management plugin to display documents. We will see this. Uh, and uh, so the, the application tells me uh, uh, injects that page into the, into, into the content. And we'll see how how it looks. Uh, so if I um, uh, look at, uh, I will restart the application and added uh, the content management plugin. And if I now log in. I get an error. <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay. It was uh, let's do it.
<coughs> so um, it's the same um, same uh, contact uh, uh, page, but now we have a, a file uh, where uh, where I can um, uh, upload uh, documents. So uh, I upload um, a PDF here, and uh, that uh, document has a soft reference to the <coughs> this person. And so that's how, how it works. And the application uh, injected that tab, you see, finds tab was injected by the application. Uh, in a bootstrap time. <coughs> and we can um, have yet another last example. Uh, we check out. Uh, we add the, uh, the task um, uh, task management plugin. So now we have uh, three plugins. Um, the task management, the content management, and uh, uh, the contact management. So uh, let's start this application. And we look in, uh, in the bootstrap. We uh, uh, use uh, this technique again to register a view inside um, the contact uh, screen to show tasks associated with that contact. So the task plugin is for scheduling tasks at the date and time. And like you, so like a cal calendar, um, you, find you you schedule something to be done at a specific uh, date and time with a priority. But the task plugin has no knowledge about contacts with companies or projects. It, it uh, uses a soft reference to reference uh, the object that it refers to. So you can assign a task to a person. You can assign a task to a uh, project uh, or um, even uh, assign a task to a document. Someone needs to update this uh, document. Assign tasks uh, to to any uh, domain instance. So if we now look uh, uh, in the application again, we have. Uh, we should have the, uh, um, the task plugin. Uh, and if I search for contacts, I have a list of uh, all the speakers. I imported uh, all the speakers for the Bridge Conference in, uh, in the Bootstrap. So I have uh, uh, import speakers from uh, CSV file. Uh, and uh, we look at uh, myself, and we see that I have a scheduled task. Um, the um, date and time is not uh, corrected. I didn't have that. Uh, but um, the task is uh, referencing uh, with a sub reference to the contact. And on contact, I see the talks. So, and, and I have uh, the calendar. Um, uh, plugin which shows uh, uh, the tasks in, in the calendar. <coughs> so uh, these are, this was an example of, um, of uh, three plugins: the contact, uh, the content management, and uh, the task plugin. But they have no uh, knowledge about each other. But even though it was uh, not possible for the plugins to communicate directly, 
we still can can build uh, a decent application that looks like it was uh, uh, everything is connected. And that's because the uh, application is the director. The application pulling information from other plugins and use sub references for for uh, relation uh, relations uh, between them. We're running out of time, so. What about the Max 3 that was released uh, two weeks ago? Graham um, uh, was here. He said that, uh, well, the plugins are uh, going to be re rewritten from scratch to the plugin framework. So, uh, every plugin needs to be rewritten. Um, and uh, that was the scare, but uh, it's not still the bad as it sounds. It's uh, pretty, looks uh, pretty much uh, like uh, in, in Waves 2. Um, uh, did not, not that much work to, to migrate the plugin from Waves 2 to, to Waves 3. And uh, it's already popped up uh, a new plugin that uh, helps you with the migration. So migrate to Waves 3. And you install that in the Waves 2 application. And it copies all the files necessary into the Waves 3 uh, uh, format. And also new is that uh, with the Waves 3 you publish your uh, plugins to to be in trade. Uh, otherwise, it's um, and as I said, uh, the you're running plugins in late. Yep, the events are built into Rest Three. The Reactor um, framework is built on the React framework, and uh, uh, you can uh, publish events with a notify and send and receive. And you can listen to events with the on uh, event listener. That's uh, built in. Yeah. So summary. Focus on the main model. Um, it's just for each plugin, each plugin should be uh, doing uh, one thing well. And decouple the business logic from the user interface. Um, and the use events in the messaging to talk between plugins and let the application be the director that routes events from one plugin to another. Yeah. And um, the Great CRM that uh, we have to dial is uh, the starting point for, for the Great CRM plugins. And uh, the source code is available uh, on mainly two uh, GitHub accounts. But there are references from the Great Serum uh, site. So that was. Um, um, it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think we have time for, for questions, or we have some quick. Yeah. One of the nights you make reference to Kamen Framework? Sorry? One of the like when you were speaking about the uh, events and messaging. The camel. You were uh, referencing camel yeah. framework. Uh, I had an experience with this camel framework, but I don't know what is the relation with the uh, race or whether it is included in some dependency. No, it, there is a camel uh, plugin. I don't know how maintained it is uh, and how to use it, but uh, there is a, a camel uh, plugin for Rails. Oh, okay. So you can search for that. Mm -hmm. Okay.